Uh, first, let me say good morning to everyone. As you know, the state has just confirmed the first positive case of the coronavirus in Alabama. This case was found in Montgomery County. We, uh, the city of Birmingham, continue to monitor the situation of the COVID-19 closely through daily contact with public health experts. As you know, the Jefferson County Health Department on Thursday recommended public gatherings with more than 500 people to be postponed or canceled until further notice. Today, the state made that recommendation statewide. We as a city fully support that recommendation and have taken action in the last day based on our discussions with Dr. Mark Wilson and his team at the Jefferson County Health Department. We all have heard the basic steps to protect us from this virus. Wash your hands often, avoid touching your face, cover your mouth and nose when you call for sneeze, and stay home if you feel sick. Again, I want to repeat those. Wash your hands often, avoid touching your face, cover your mouth and nose when you call for sneeze, and stay home if you're sick. The CDC recommends social distancing to stop the spread of the virus. Um, that recommendation is six feet, particularly keeping that distance between you and someone who appears sick. But again, we want to encourage those, if you feel sick, please stay at home. Now I want to speak directly to our older neighbors and seniors in our community here in Birmingham and those who have serious chronic medical conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and any form of a lung disease. The CDC says people over 60 years of age and those who have chronic medical conditions are at higher risk of getting very sick from this illness. Not only do we encourage our seniors to use precautions to take this virus seriously, but we also call upon family members. We call upon friends and neighbors to check in and support them as well. And if you are serving as a caregiver, please use extra caution to prevent the transmission of germs. As part of the city's response to reduce risk, all city business travel outside of the state is canceled. For travel outside of Jefferson County, but within Alabama, essential travel is still permitted. Over the last 24 hours, we have canceled a town hall meeting. We've canceled our UNCF gala, which is a gathering of more than 1,000. Many of you all know other events have been canceled throughout our city this weekend as well, which includes our St. Patrick's Day Parade. These have been tough decisions, but have been made with the focus on protecting the public. The leadership at city-owned venues have consulted with public health officials and are taking steps to ensure best practices to protect our employees and our residents. And our public work staff works diligently to keep our facilities sanitized and keeping with CDC recommendations. Now I understand this is an anxious time for many and in particularly among our small businesses as they see event cancellations on large scales which may affect them. I have instructed Dr. Josh Carpenter and the Department of Innovation and Economic Opportunity to move quickly to identify ways we can support those small businesses within our community. We are working with civic and private partners to launch an economic resilience fund so that small businesses can remain open and workers can keep our economy moving. We also will work with the Federal Small Business Administration and state agencies to make sure Birmingham businesses endure this uncertainty. If you are a small business, please know that we are working to understand how we can support you in keeping your doors open. We must continue to support our local small businesses. We must continue to support our local small businesses. That includes continuing to shop, continuing to eat. And if you are a fan of Birmingham's great restaurants and retailers, contribute to our resilience fund by reaching out to my team. Working together as a community, we will move through this challenge. I know this is a tough time right now, but I am more than confident standing here, flanked by other city leaders in the community, 
the United Way, and the leadership at the school system, we as a community will move past this challenge. But I also want to encourage you strongly, please follow the recommendations of our public health experts. Check in on loved ones and neighbors who are at risk for respiratory illness or illnesses. And at this time, I urge everyone to stay calm and show your compassion. And what I mean by show your compassion, there are many that are in need in our community. Um, now is not the time to retreat on continuing to help others. Uh, giving blood and supporting the Red Cross at this time is still critical and important. Supporting things to support our food bank, our local food bank, as well as Meals on Wheels is very important. And in a minute, I'll bring up Drew Langlo of the United Way to give more detail. And so at this point, I encourage you as a community to continue to show compassion. And in the midst of this crisis, it's important that we remain calm and follow the lead of the professional health experts. At this time, I call up Drew Langlo. Well, good morning. Um, at United Way, we're preparing to make sure that critical services that serve some of our most vulnerable populations are able to continue. Our 211 Information Referral Center, it's a three-digit phone number you can call, uh, is prepared to, uh, with information on where to go to, one, get information about the virus. They can give you links. They can give you phone numbers to call. Uh, as well as um, non-emergency information about where to go for various resources. Our Meals on Wheels program uh, serves over a th feeds over a thousand elderly a day. Many of these are frail elderly, many are homebound. Uh, we are already started in motion uh, by ordering um, uh, shelf-stable supplies to be able to deliver to our, our seniors in case our volunteer uh, food distribution system is interrupted or in case there's an interruption in our food supply. So we're going to be looking for healthy volunteers who might be able to, to help us out uh, if we have volunteers that get sick. We can't allow them to deliver food. So we're going to be looking for healthy volunteers to, to help out. Um, we know that a lot of children rely on the, uh, the, the school lunch program across our five county area. We've already started talking with uh, various superintendents about how we might be able to help uh, in that area. And we're preparing to help local food pantries and soup kitchens and food distribution sites across our five county area uh, by increasing the amount of food supply they can have on their shelves in anticipation of families uh, being temporary la temporarily laid off. We're hoping some of these don't come to fruition, but at the same time, we're preparing to make sure that we can provide those services uh, as, as a community. We also know that there will be other needs and cracks in the nonprofit sector, and, and to that we're asking for your help. Um, we need volunteer help, and we also need contributions. You can go to uwca.org slash COVID-19, and at that website you can uh, choose uh, to give information about what you'd be willing to do as a volunteer or able to do, as well as if you'd like to make a donation, you can do it at that same website again. That's uwca.org slash COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Again, I want to thank Drew and the United Way uh, for continuing to step up. Um, again, as I said, this is not the time to retreat. We have to not only support our small businesses, but it's really incumbent um, that for our food bank, for Meals on Wheels, um, for the Red Cross, and many other nonprofits, that they can continue their work in serving this community. And at this point, I want to call up um, a person I work with every day. Um, we're in the trenches, and we're always communicating. And he represents the entire city council, and that's President William Parker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just on behalf of the, the city council, um, our pledge to work with you hand in hand uh, as we do and, and uh, those uh, with, with Dr. Carpenter I'm going to uh, uh, task our, our department chairs or, or our chairs of our committees to work in tandem to make sure everything moves swiftly to make sure that uh, we can continue uh, to move Birmingham forward. But just want to encourage everyone to follow the lead of, of our medical uh, advice from the Jefferson County Health Department and uh, we will continue to work hand in hand with you Mr. Mayor with the school of the school system uh, as we move Birmingham forward. So, Thank you. Mr. Mayor. And then there's one last person I'll call up before we take questions, and that is Dr. Josh Carpenter, who was over the Department of Economic 
opportunity and innovation. I think when we talk about our local economy, um, there's, some, there's a, some dependency on relationships between the city of Birmingham, our small businesses, and our community. And I want him just to provide some update on what we're attempting to do to make sure that our local economy um, stays be hamstrung. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good morning. As you all know, uh, small businesses are the lifeblood of our community. They're uh, responsible for over half of the jobs in our community. And it's important that at this point, we shift from being consumers of great products to folks who have civic courage, who want to continue to shop and continue to frequent those restaurants and those retailers that are important to our everyday lives. Uh, we are working with private sector partners in the philanthropic community to create an economic resilience fund. We're going to call the BHAM Strong Fund. There will be more information forthcoming on that soon. There's two things you need to know. Number one, the Birmingham Business Resource Center, led by Bob Dickerson, uh, will be administering that fund to small businesses, that's businesses less than 50 employees, uh, to provide zero interest loans over a small um, 30 to 60 day period uh, so that we can make sure that we bridge companies through these tough times. Our goal is to make sure that we keep workers employed and that we keep doors open to key businesses. So there'll be more information there. If you are interested in donating to that fund or being a part of that movement, uh, please work with our partners at the Community Foundation of Greater Birmingham. They have a fund open right now so that you can go ahead and donate to that fund. Again, it's important. If you are able to go out and buy something, please do. Um, yesterday, we ate lunch somewhere. We'll eat lunch somewhere again today. We'll go buy something. And when you do, we hope that um, we'll, we'll roll out a social media uh, campaign soon and we'll roll out a greater website. But we hope that this can be a moment where all of us draw together and show some resilience, not just for our community, but for our economy. Thank you, Dr. Carpenter. At this time, we'll open it up for any questions you all have. Mayor, what, what uh, conversations have you been having with many of the members of our faith community in Birmingham about church gatherings? I know many churches have larger than 500 people in their Sunday services. So a couple things. Um, one is um, I met with about um, 10 to 12 pastors in person yesterday to start talking about what we can do. Um, but after conversations with the health department today, um, I am going to have a follow-up. We're going to actually have a conference call that as many pastors in the area that want to uh, participate on this call later um, can chime in um, where I'll be on the call giving some advice based on what I've received from the health department. And one of the experts from the health department will be there too to provide additional information. But here's the top line what we're recommending. Um, just as the county health department has stated, just as this, um, now the State Health Department has stated, um, gatherings and events. We believe that also applies to those churches uh, that have large congregations. Uh, we would encourage our, our pastors, our faith-based leaders in this community um, to exercise good judgment. If they have a, the ability um, to have service online, we encourage them to use that option. Um, if they have the ability to do more than one service, to decrease the population during that actual service so that congregation, um, those congregants can be smaller in numbers. Um, we ask that they exercise that option. Um, we, we ask that they, you know, provide hand sanitizer at the church. Um, we ask those uh, faith-based leaders who love to hug and shake hands um, to not actually do that um, probably for the month of March and we'll see how that looks in the month of April. Um, but to practice, be intentional about practicing social distancing um, if they have to actually attend church and have church, have service. Uh, we don't necessarily want service to stop, um, but we want them to practice social distancing, which also includes um, washing hands, having hand sanitizer available um, on their pews, et cetera. Um, but this is the most important things as it relates to our faith-based community. A minute ago, I told you all that the most vulnerable um, population within our community are our seniors. We know our seniors. Um, disproportionately, um, which is a good thing, um, attend church at a higher number. Uh, we, again, that applies. Uh, we want our faith-based leaders to encourage their members, those who are sick, um, those that they know have certain issues, those that they know who are over a certain age. Um, take those precautions, and if they can, and if they can, um, stay home, find other ways to get their message out to their members of their church. Uh, 
So um, we are working through um, that as well. Um, there have been some conversations through our um, liaison here at our office, which is Don Lupo, talking to those um, at, at One Roof who connect with all the different service organizations. How can we engage probably our second most vulnerable population as it relates to the COVID-19, which is probably our, homeless, our homelessness community? Um, there are no concrete plans, um, but we, will, we are working through that, um, just like we're working through engaging our faith-based leaders um, with their members, particularly those over 60 years of age. I think um, if you all pay any attention to the 10 a.m. press conference, Dr. Mackey, the state superintendent, spoke. Um, the state of Alabama, as it relates to our 130 plus public school systems, and I think locally we're, we're concerned, isolated to Birmingham City School System, um, the state of Alabama, um, in listening to the professional experts at the state health department, um, have not made that decision. So for our school systems, we will follow the lead, just like municipalities and cities, we will follow the lead of our local and county health experts and our state health department experts. At this time, um, they see no reason to actually cl close schools. I know we talk about, as the state superintendent said, the difference between 500 and 499, um, but that applies when people are in certain spaces, confined spaces. We don't feel that's applicable at this point um, to an actual classroom setting. So. Um, the superintendent was on a call just like I was with our Jefferson County Health Department leader, um, Dr. Mark Wilson, this morning. And she's on these calls, and she's talking with her board members, et cetera. So um, we want, again, to encourage our parents and our community members. At this time, we will continue um, life as going on with school, going on with work. If things change, we will bring that to the public, public um, as fast as possible. Is there anybody else? Seeing none again before we close out, I just want to again encourage you. The COVID-19 uh, has a disproportionate effect for those who are, are seniors. We want to encourage those who know seniors to protect seniors. And so I'm thinking about our nursing homes. I'm thinking about our senior elderly facilities. Um, please follow the advice of the health experts um, watch how we engage our seniors. Um, our seniors who are listening to this, watch your movement and how you interact with people and everybody continue to be safe. Thank you so much.